Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another PS5 video. So it looks like we finally have the full release now of ETA Hen version 2.0b by Lightning Mods. Now we have had a pre-release build for several weeks and also test builds that have been coming out and uh, people have been posting here and there. But this is the full release that now has full support for 5.x and 6.x firmwares, which basically means if you're on a 5.x or a 6.x firmware now, you can now jailbreak your PS5 up to the same point as previous jailbreaks like 3.0 to 4.51. So you're now basically on par with those other firmwares, which is awesome. There's also a new items flow build to go along with this as well as there is with all ETA Hen updates that we'll get into. What I'm going to do before we get into all of the features, because this is a massive update that has lots of new things added, not only for 5.x and 6.x getting supported, but lots of new features that are now added in this version too. So before we get into that, let's take a quick look at how to get this set up and then we'll go through all of the new features that have been added here in this version. So first things first, you want to head over to the exploit site. So you, whether you're using UMTX1 or UMTX2, I think UMTX2 is kind of the go-to one at the moment. So if you head on over to your exploit host, I'm using Idle Sauces host, which is the one I always recommend. And then make sure that you allow it to cache the new payloads because when ETA Hen 2.0b gets added to this host, it will need to cache that payload so you'll get a message saying it's caching the payloads once that's done it will say it's finished and you'll need to refresh by hitting options and then hitting the reload option and then it should say the cache is up to date so it has the new payload cached at that point you can then select the option to run the jailbreak and wait for that to complete and once it completes you should get the payload options so what you want to do is obviously select ETA Hen 2.0b and that will get ETA Hen up and running on your console with all of the new features that it provides. Obviously, if you're on a 6.xx firmware, you cannot use the web browser to load it. So you'll need to use the Blu-ray exploit or the Lua exploit. And I've already done a guide that shows you how to load K stuff on those firmwares. Obviously, you can just use it to send ETA Hen instead of K stuff by basically just using a payload injector like Netcat GUI, entering your PS5's IP with the port number 9021, and then dragging your ETA Hen.bin payload inside the program and then just sending it to your console once you have the Blu-ray exploit or the Lua exploit set up so that it has the elf loader running. You can just send the payload with a payload injector and it will execute ETA Hen on those systems as well. So anyway, that's the general idea of how you get things set up there to get ETA Hen running. So once you have ETA Hen up and running here, we can head into our settings. We'll go down to our debug settings, which contains our ETA Hen toolbox. So starting with some of the obvious stuff, if we head into the services, we actually have a new option here called Direct Package Installer version 2. If we enable this, it runs a web UI on the PS5's IP address on port 12800. So on the computer, we can just enter that same IP address and port number into our URL of a web browser. And if we go there, it will take us to the site that is actually hosted on the PS5 by ETA Hen, the DPI v2 web interface. So all we need to do is click Choose File. And then we can select a package file that's on our computer. So this will work across multiple devices. So I'll use PT. I did delete PT. I did already have it installed. I've deleted it from my PS5. So we'll reinstall it here by selecting it. The other great option here is that you can actually just paste in a URL. So if you have a link to a package file and you have the direct download link to that package file on some server somewhere, you can just paste in the link here and it will upload and download it directly from that server so that you don't have to download it to your computer first and then send it to the PS5. So that's a pretty cool option there. So in my case, I just selected one that's on my computer and then we can click upload and install. And it even gives you the time remaining and the speed of how long it's going to take here. Okay, so we're now done 100% install started. If we switch over here, you can see that it has actually started to install it on the PS5 after downloading. If we head back over to our homepage. It should hopefully be here. And yep, we can see it's now installing. And there it goes. So it says downloading again. So I think the way it works is it downloads it to a location somewhere on the PS5's SSD and then it installs it from there. So this is now the installation process. I'll quit out of there before it actually launches the application, but you can see it has installed. Just wait a few seconds here and there it goes, ready to play. So we have successfully installed our package file. And if we switch back over here, clear temporary files once you're done installing because I don't believe it deletes the package file after it's installed it. So that means there's kind of two copies of the game, the package file that it downloaded and the installed version. So you'll have like double the amount of storage space being used on the system, which is why there is this temporary files option, which you can select 
which will then delete that package file once it has been downloaded to the console. So another new feature that's been added is the cheats feature and the cheats downloader. So we can activate this by running a game, a PS4 game or a PS5 game. In this case, I'm running Demon Souls. And then once we have the game running, we can just switch back over into the ETA Hen toolbox and head to the cheats work in progress option. If we select this option, you can see it says there's no cheats currently available because I don't have any downloaded or installed at the moment. So all I need to do is select the option to download the latest cheats and it will automatically download all of the cheat files available and then extract them into the data folder on the hard drive in the ETA Hen cheats folder. So it'll extract all of the latest cheats just like how Gold Hen does it on PS4, same idea. So once the download is complete, we can press circle to back out of the menu and then go back into the cheats menu. And now all of your cheats should now be available if there are cheats available for that specific game and game version that you're running. So Demon Souls version 1.04 does have a bunch of cheats here. So I can go ahead and enable infinite health as well as infinite stamina, one hit kill, and we'll also enable max souls as well. So once you've enabled all of your cheats, you can just switch back into the game and see that all of your cheats are applied. So you can see if I start running around, my stamina bar is not going down. So I do in fact have infinite stamina. So that is working perfectly. And then of course I can also kill enemies in one hit, uh, which is also working. And I also have infinite health as well, which will demonstrate if we can find another enemy that will actually attack me here. And as you can see here, we've got infinite health working as I'm not taking any damage when I get hit here. Okay, so before we get into any more ETA Hen stuff, let's go ahead and install the latest version of Items Flow to go along with this, because some of the features kind of rely on Items Flow here. So what we can do is, first of all, if you don't have Items Flow installed already, you can install it from the Homebrew Store. If you don't have that installed, you can install that from the ETA Hen toolbox with the Install Homebrew Store option, and that will get the Homebrew Store installed. And then you can run the Homebrew Store and use that to then download and install the latest version of Items Flow. And once that's available, we can then launch Items Flow from here. Now, when you first launch Items Flow, it will actually download two plugins for ETA Hen automatically. It used to just download the Illusions Cheat plugin, which it does download still, although it's been renamed to the Items Flow XML Patches plugin, which makes more sense because it's really patches, like 60 FPS patches that it's used for rather than cheats. So it's been renamed. And then we also have the Disable Errors plugin, which is used to get rid of those annoying error messages that pop up when running PS5 game backups. So that is another plugin that has been added there, and those can be loaded from the plugin section in the ETA Hen toolbox if you want to enable those. And now that we have Items Flow installed, we can take a look at another option that's been added in ETA Hen, which is the ETA Hen toolbox on startup feature, which is enabled by default. And this will just load this custom toolbox menu that we're in whenever we load ETA Hen. And we now have the option to disable this if you don't want to load this menu and instead you just want the regular debug settings to load uh, whenever you load ETA Hen instead. And that is what this will do. Now, one of the reasons why this has been added is to fix the issue with rest mode where it was causing some instability when trying to load the toolbox when recovering from rest mode. So in order to use rest mode properly with this, you are going to want to disable this option to allow you to safely put the system into rest mode and then recover from rest mode while still running ETA Hen, even though it will not load the toolbox when we recover from rest mode. We'll put the system into rest mode and then I'll skip forward here until we recover from rest mode. And you can see we get the message saying that ETA Hen is recovering from rest mode and we get everything up and running again. So ETA Hen is still working now after recovering from rest mode. But when we go into the settings and we check our debug settings, we now have the regular debug settings menu instead of the ETA Hen toolbox. But we still have ETA Hen running so that we can load our fake packages and our homebrew applications and everything. And if you're wondering how do I get the toolbox back again then, well, what you can do is run items flow and from items flow, we can press the options button to head into the settings. We now have this new option here called ETA Hen Toolbox Options. And if we select that with X, we have the option to inject and re-add the toolbox. So if we select that option, it will go ahead and reactivate the toolbox. Although as you can see with case stuff, it says it can take up to two minutes and it really can take that long in order for it to re-enable. And then if we just skip forward to the point where it says the ETA Hen toolbox has been successfully enabled, so it's now back up and loaded. And then also in the ETA Hen toolbox options, if you press right on the D-pad or left on the D-pad, it will give you another option, which is to toggle the auto start ETA Hen toolbox on startup. 
so that when you next load ETA Hen, again, it will re-enable uh, the toolbox. So that's another option that you can enable from there as well. But if we switch back over again, back into the debug settings, you can see we now have the ETA Hen toolbox loaded again. So that is how you can re-toggle the toolbox again after you've already deactivated it. And then on top of that, we also have the retail game updates installer. If we select a retail game like Bloodborne and we go to retail game updates, it can actually download the latest updates from Sony CDN and allow you to install them. And if you're not spoofing your PS4 firmware version, it will also tell you if your firmware version is compatible with that retail update. So you can make sure that you're installing an update that's actually compatible with the firmware so it will load. So that is an option. Now, the reason it's saying mine is spoofed is because I loaded this using Idle Sauce's exploit host, which does automatically spoof the PS4 SDK to 99.9 .9 right now with UMTX2. That might be changed in a future update. I suspect it probably will be because one of the new features that's been added here is a spoofing feature in ETA Hen, uh, which will allow installing higher firmware fake packages without actually spoofing the system version. And that is specifically to avoid this issue so that uh, exploit hosts will not need to automatically spoof the version to 99.9 .9, which will interfere with this uh, update checking process in items flow. It's not necessary for exploit hosts to do that anymore since ETA Hen will automatically patch it without having to spoof that number. So that is another thing that's been added in ETA Hen. So I suspect that this uh, error we're getting about PS4 firmware being spoofed will not be an issue once exploit hosts remove the automatic spoofing which they will probably do. Maybe they'll just add it as a another payload in the exploit host instead of applying it automatically. So that's what I kind of expect there. You also need to make sure you don't have a DNS blocker active when using this feature. Otherwise, it won't allow you to download the retail updates from Sony servers since you'll be blocking Sony servers with a DNS blocker. So that will have to be disabled at least temporarily in order to be able to use this feature to get your game updates downloaded. I believe there's also been an improvement to the package installer so it shows more information as it's installing the package files in items flow. That's another feature. And the last big change in this items flow version is an experimental self decryptor for the items flow dumper when you're dumping your PS4 games or PS5 games to turn the PS4 games into fake packages or turn your PS5 games into playable dumps that you can run from items flow. So in that case, up until now, we've not been able to automatically decrypt the executables in items flow unless you're on a bypervisor supported firmware up to 2.70 where items flow will automatically decrypt the game executables as well as dumping the game files. So it's more easy to turn it into a working game backup. So this is an experimental version. So don't know how well it works with every game yet. But the idea is that the dumper will now also try and decrypt the game executables while it's dumping the game files, just like it does on bypervisor supported firmwares, so that you'll be more easily able to create your PS5 and PS4 game backups. And because it's an experimental option, it will prompt you to uh, either enable it or not. So you have the choice to just dump the normal game files as it did before, or you can enable this experimental feature uh, to see if it will successfully decrypt the game executables for you too. So those are the new options that have been added in items flow to go along with this new build of ETA Hen. Now finally, there's also a bunch of other things that have also been included here. Things that are more in the background. I mentioned the spoofing feature, which is something that's more in the background. We also have a few more features like all internal payloads such as PS5 and K stuff are now loaded by ETA Hen itself. Whereas previously it would send it to the exploit to load those payloads kind of separately. Uh, PS5 debug has also been updated to 1.0b2 and also PS5 debug has been disabled currently for 5.xx firmwares because apparently it does not work correctly on those firmwares right now. So that's been disabled temporarily. We also have the PS5 debug option in the ETA Hen toolbox which can now load it on demand without rebooting. There's also been several bug fixes that Lightning Mods has included here. So he's fixed an issue that would cause plugins to fail when loading them from the USB. He's also fixed rest mode, but you must disable the toolbox auto start before entering rest mode, which we already talked about. We also have a fix for the allow data access and app sandboxes option for 3.x, 5.x and 6.x, uh, which was thanks to Best Pig. So not sure, but there must have been an issue on those firmwares. I'm on 4.03, so I never really had an issue with that feature, but apparently there was some issue with it on those mentioned firmwares there. So that should now be fixed. There's also been a small fix for an issue causing the remote play menu to display more than one equals sign for the account ID, uh, which again, not a big issue, but that's been resolved as well. 
and also FPKGI was kind of showing up as a legacy application. So that's now been whitelisted in ETA Hen. It should no longer give you that message about it being like a legacy application, like it's not designed for PS5. So that's also been resolved as well. So this is definitely a monumental release of ETA Hen and Items Flow with lots of new features. And of course, the big thing being 5.x and 6.x support, which finally brings those firmwares up to the same level as previous jailbreaks so that we're pretty much all on the same page for 3.x, 4.x, and now 5.x and 6.x as well. So fantastic for everybody on 5.x and 6.x and everybody else on older firmwares who already had a jailbreak. Now you have a ton of extra features that you can play around with with ETA Hen and Items Flow. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.